In this episode, we're going to be talking about um, the Mi'kmaq people and our relatives from the Deep South here, which are the known as the Blackfoot people. And here we have two, again, as we said earlier, they may have common threads and they may have uh, similarities and values, but they're two totally different cultural groups. The Mi'kmaq people uh, were the first, if we're talking about history and the knowledge of those people, they probably had contact probably 500 years ago and with settlers. And for us here, and, the, and, the, and especially the, the Blackfoot people, settler contact would have happened probably within 150 years. But what remained, con uh, remained the same is they held on to those, the fact of who they were as individual people and as individual tribes, very different people. Here, the, the, the Blackfoot people uh, were specifically known as people of the plains, and whereas they would follow the buffalo up and down, and whereas the Mi'kmaq people were more like, they were called people of the, of the dawn and were more or less stationary in a certain area. Where? Nidaptut, Midali will all tear. Nindalo is in Michael Ardeni, Atleawe, Unamagic, Migamagic. Where the Bexi Budan, Dalo is a way with Stony, Unamagic. Nina Migamau, a Mui Wadam, than tell you no easy, a Mui Wadam than that layaway. Megidadam, than del the goodish Kujinook, a Tanego, del the goodish Kujinook. Greetings, everybody. My name is Michael Ardeni, and I am uh, I am Mi'kmaq from the Eskasoni First Nation in uh, beautiful Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. I am honored to be here to speak with you guys in, in my language, but also um, to be a part of this uh, to be a part of this great uh, great uh, teaching moments. You know, our people have uh, have learned so much. <clears throat> And I've been a part of so many things across Turtle Island. You know, my father, my father went to residential school, and uh, no matter where I go, you know, I carry that with me. But I'm also on my healing journey, where I am learning more about our people, more about our culture, and 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 being a language speaker, I I try to um, I try to incorporate and speak my language everything that I do teaching my children to speak my language and, and teaching other people to speak their language. So that's a big part of who I am. The Mi'kmaq people are, uh, are an Eastern people. We call ourselves, and we are part of the Wabanagi Confederacy, uh, which is a coalition of different nations, the, the Wolostogwe, the Passamaquoddy, Penobscot, and the Abenaki, all Eastern nations, all collectively call ourselves people of the dawn and the Wabanaki people. And our our homeland, we call it Wabanagik, but also we call it Migamagik, specifically in this, ter this territory here. And in Eastern Canada, uh, this, is, uh, this is what we call Wabanagik. This is our traditional territory. So we, we greet the sun every day. We are the first nation that sees the sun, that does our sunrise ceremony every morning and we sing and we give thanks for a new day. And every day that we, we do this connects us to those ancestral teachings that our ancestors and our, our parents and our grandparents have taught us. In Mi'kmaq, we say Niskamish. And the opposite with that, well, opposite of that would be Nugami or my grandmother. But we say Niskamish is our grandfather, or we call in the old the old way to say it, our, our son. We say Nagu said today, but the olden way to say it would have been Niskamish, which means grandfather. So when we meet Niskamish in the sky every morning, that sunrise ceremony, we offer our Damawi, our tobacco, and our prayers and our thanks. And we raise that tobacco up and we give thanks for that new day coming, the new beginnings starting, those many different teachings that come with the sunrise ceremony. And we ask our, we ask this Kamish, we ask Gisuk, our creator. We ask all those Jijamish, those Greek, those good spirits that are around us. And we give thanks 
for that day. We give thanks for everything that the warmth of the sun that gives us. This Kamish, our grandfather gives us the light, things for things to grow, our medicine, the water that it supports. And it gives all of us life. Like the moon, Nugumi, our grandmother, and how in partnership they work together, our people gave thanks to these many things. And in the first thing in the morning, that's what our, our, our people still do to this day. And our ancestors have done since the time immemorial to give thanks and to thank that Niskamish in that good way we call a sunrise ceremony. So we offer our tobacco up, up and we, we place it onto the ground or we place it in the water, we place it in the woods. Wherever you're doing your ceremony, you know, our people, uh, when we do our ceremony, we often go right down to the water and we face east towards this Kamish, towards our towards the sun for that good, uh, for those good teachings and to do this in a good way. So I'm gonna sing you a short song. You know, our people would not only do that sunrise ceremony, they would they would sing a little song. <clears throat> And I'm using what we call an instrument, this instrument, what we call a jigamon. And it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a rattle. It's, there's no English word for it, just a jigamon, but it's a, it's a rattle. When jigabasukye ama wendala bebi da iya no te jigna go chala diyo. Hey ya hey yo hey na, hey hey ya hey yo hey na. And that that song there is a is a song we call it a clan song. And when our uh, it's usually the what the first song sung to show that how many people that are at we call a Mauiomi, which is a, I guess is a, a word that we use today for powwow, but it, it means more than that. It's a Mauiomi, a gathering of all the people. So when that singer would sing that song, it talks about different animals. So it talks about different clans. And once the singer sings that. The, the person, the people that are there, their clan, they come out and they do their dance. So that all those people that are there, all those clans that are represented at that Mauiomi, um, they had they get a they get a verse in the song. So we we greet our we greet the Niskamish, our, our son, with a song so that we set off our day in a good way in ceremony, but also in practical things, giving thanks. When we talk about ceremony and when we talk about how we incorporate everything that we do as Unno people and how important like the sunrise ceremony is and all the different kind of ceremonies that our people do all across North America, all across Third Island, and especially here in Wabanagi territory, um, when we greet the sun and sunrise ceremony, we how important ceremony is and how important ceremony is for our young people as well, especially our young people. So ceremony is education. It is a classroom. It has a curriculum that is legislated by natural law. Our ceremonies were and are still central to our original education system. Our connections within our communities and within our families, it goes deep, deep, just like the trees. You know, their roots go deep into the ground. It's it's how our people are. And in, in, in Mi'kmaq, we say Dan Wedebeksin. Dan Wedebeksin is, is where you come from. But it's more than that. It's that connection to the land. It's that connection to the water. It's a connection to everything that grows in that area where you come from. 
It's those family connections. It's that community that you come from. It's your language. It's all of that and more. So it's so important to always go back and to connect with those elders, to talk to those elders and to create those connections with those elders, to talk with them, to learn about your history, to learn about your family, to learn about your language, your culture, your ceremonies. It's also very important that we continue to do that and we continue to respect our elders in those ways. So uh, with that, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to me. And I hope that everybody has a, a great day today. I'll see you guys. Living under a blackfoot sky, a modern winter count. I've always had a passion for popular musical heritage and how to blend it with my indigenous music. This exhibit centers around a winter count robe. A winter count was a tanned hide or robe of a buffalo where symbols were drawn on the surface. The images drawn consisted of significant events that occurred to the group of people in possession or who owned the hide. I chose to showcase significant images of my life, blending a story of who I am in my landscape. I then separated several significant themes that guide me as an Indigenous man into story panels. The various themes I chose to highlight taken from the winter count are heritage, education, career, culture, music, and a final panel on my, uh, my gratitude, my thanks. The panels are accompanied by a song lyric printed out on an adjoining panel that coincide with the theme as well. On these lyric panels are QR codes that are instantly read by any smartphone to play an accompanying original song that I wrote and performed. Mine, uh, my winter count is non-sequential, meaning it's, it's broken up into themes. And then, of course, that's how I was able to then extract them into the panels. Uh, but primarily, it starts with images of who I am. So it starts off with um, a symbol that I relate to who I am. It's a guitar in a, in a traditional native sun and then it branches out into symbols that relate to my identity. Shortly thereafter, we get into the theme of family or heritage. And all the images, images that you then see are, are images of people. And those people represent my, my family, uh, represents my wife, my children, and my grandchildren. And then behind those, is this, the traditional symbols of their Blackfoot names. So my, my, uh, my youngest grandson, his name is, his Blackfoot name is Ini, or in, in English it's Buffalo. So on the, on the row of animal figures, you see a Buffalo. And then for my other, one of my granddaughters, her name is Anadaki. And you see the image of a, of, a, of a lady and you can see some, some sparks or some, some uh, um, shininess about her. And her, her name in Blackfoot is Pretty Woman or Pretty Girl. And then my, uh, my other daughter, uh, granddaughter, her name is um, Iniskimaki or, or Buffalo Stone Woman. So on there, we have a picture of an Iniskin, which is a buffalo stone. And then we go on to the, the next theme of, uh, again, being very personal. We talk about my educational journey, um, and that coincides with the panel on education. And I talk about uh, symbols that signify um, a diploma, uh, my degree, and then, my, uh, then a master's degree and it, it relates in that way. And then we go on into, into career. The, the symbols begin to 
talk about the work that I do in community. It's talking about understanding um, the Blackfoot territory within its place in my um, within my community. So there's a lot of land images in that uh, in that section. And then uh, it goes off into music. And there's a lot of symbols there of people playing an instrument. Now, in a traditional sense, you won't see a guitar in an old winter count, but I've had the artists that I was working with uh, create those images as if they were a traditional image. So I have a picture of a guitar on a winter count, uh, a drum, a rattle, a harmonica, which are instruments that I, that I still use. Um, so that's that's uh, images that you'll see there. And then uh, the final bit of images that you'll see are uh, this idea of giving thanks to the community. So the very last image is both the artist who who did the painting and 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 my interpretation of gratitude of thanks and i believe that one of the most uh, important components or a very strong value of our of our blackfoot heritage is the idea of thanks of gratitude of uh, being thankful for what we have being respectful of what we have so the uh, the final images represents gratitude i have to give a huge thank you to uh, william sanger iii um, an artist and colleague from the blood, from the blood tribe, we commissioned uh, William to to do the actual artwork on the the piece, and I'm very thankful to his his interpretations and his style. I hope that sharing my story in my traditional way, uh, paired with my traditional and uh, contemporary music, will show how similar we can all be when we take the time to share our stories. Thank you. One thing that's unique that's happening in our community, and I'm always going to start from here, is we talk about uh, language specifically and our culture specifically being unique, which it is. The Nehio culture is very rich and it comes from a long, long history. But having said that, I think we as educators, uh, when we go out into the communities, be it if we're coming from Mi'kmaq territory or we're going to the tip of the Pacific West Coast, there are difference. There are difference in our cultures and different in our languages. We may have some of the same values and we may have some of the same common spokes or threads. But what makes us so unique and so what is so different is that there is there is a difference in, our, uh, in everything we do as such. I bring you a perfect example. My time in working in the, in the province of British Columbia, I had the opportunity to go all over the province. But what people don't really understand is that if you just go over a mountain, you go over a hill or just down the road from the river, you will find a totally different cultural group. The language is is very different. That people may only be about 10 miles to the next people. They would not understand one another. Sure, there will be certain ties because there may have been um, interaction and blending of uh, the nations as time goes on, but they're very unique in their culture. And for me, when I went growing up, I thought everybody was like us here in Alberta. We were all living in teepees. And through the stories, my, my, my grandparents used to tell us, you know, there is a mountain up there. As a child, we never even thought about mountains because you can't see it. We didn't think they existed. But man, once you went across Jasper and you got and you saw those mountains and we started to meet different tribes. As we went further on, we, we met the people from the Carrier Nation. Totally different people. The language we could not understand it. But what they would say is, I am Indian. Okay, so I am Indian. And today they say, I am indigenous, or I am carrier, or I am Nehio. 
and those two words, carrier, then I am carrier, or I am nehu, uh, bring into context of who we are as individual people and as individual tribes.